Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending tonight's meeting. I hope everyone had a happy new year. We're off to a good year, uh, pretty good start. Before we start the meeting, I'd like to read our, one of our favorite quotations again from Madam City Clerk Sue Richards. If one looks for the best, one finds it. If one seeks the worst, this becomes a reality. Call the 19th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Would you please call the roll? Salmon? Here. Deber? Here. Eber? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Oh, excuse. Thank you. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? And <laughs> Vanderweel? Here. 15 <laughs> present. Quorum is present. The next item we have, is, if you'll notice, we, do, we did a little change here. We always approved the minutes. We started conducting business and then said the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance should come first and then we can conduct business. So now it is time to uh, pledge our allegiance to this great country that we live in. I'd ask Alderman Bonnie Serrata to please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Approval of the minutes, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I would move that the minutes of the previous Common Council be accepted as printed and uh, the same stand approved. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. If not, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Mayor's appointments. Do we have any? Oh, we're missing the mayor's appointments. Can we move on? I'll have to end it. Okay. We'll. Uh, We'll be moving on to the next item, and we'll come back on the mayor's appointments. Public forum, Madam, Madam Clerk. Okay, first on the list would be Jeff Shuko. Jeff, can you give me your home address, please? 2303 South 17th Street. South 17th? Yes. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor, council members, and citizens. In the spirit of the new year, it's only proper to announce that since I am running for alderman and our budget is tight, I will not accept any contract from the city for problem bird removal. Instead, moving the birds from the boardwalks and, and South Beach in front of Blue Harbor will be done free of charge until Blue Harbor turns profits. That is, if you'd like, no bird bangers. <laughs> Uh, it should be noted that last summer when I approached the mayor to secure an open-ended contract to provide this service, he was honest with me up front. He stated that his major concern was to get spending under control for the benefit of the taxpayers. Impressed by this, I offered to do what I could to clear the boardwalks and beaches for the 4th of July for free. Unfortunately, in securing signatures for my nomination papers, I have been informed of what I perceive to be contracts secured not in the best interest of the taxpayers. As a result, these contracts, I feel, should be reopened for bidding. Additionally, various departments apparently need oversight committees to determine priorities. These issues will be discussed with the mayor with the best interest of the taxpayers in mind. In the past eight, eight months, after all, I've seen the, uh, more fiscal restraint than in the prior eight years. I would now like to encourage everyone to work together to keep our community a place for everyone to enjoy and prosper. And in regards to the bird problems we've had with the boardwalks and whatnot, I have a diagram here that I'll turn over to the Mayor and Common Council with a rather simple solution that I, would be, I believe would be quite effective in uh, lessening the maintenance costs for the city workers with the power washing. And my next uh, topic I'd like to discuss briefly is a subject replacement activity for Lake Fest. Possible title, Kiwanis Lakefront Aerospace Science Fest. Involve two areas, uh, A at the Armory, invite school exhibits, two county airport exhibits, three Sheboygan Sharks remote control and Kettle Marine Flyers Club exhibits, four local military recruiter exhibits, 
Five, Nassau exhibits. B, South Pier and D-Land Park. Rockets for Schools event possibly at South Pier. Two, Kite Flying Area, DeLand Park. Three, Remote Control Electric Park Flyer Area. Four, Sheboygan County Airport Displays, para flyers, for example, which would be easy for them to bring in and set up. Five, Military Displays. Six, Qantas Club. Food and Beverage Stands. And I noted here that these exhibits and displays would cost the Qantas Club nothing. C, I would urge the city officials to make some funds of the $25 million federal grant for the county for walkways and bike trails to be utilized for a footbridge across the Sheboygan River. This will make access to our lakefront activities from Blue Harbor easy and attractive as a tourist draw in the coming years. And uh, I have looked into this a little bit. One of the main drawbacks was uh, having another operator to operate it for the boat traffic. And I've determined that by using uh, cameras pointed up and downstream in the river and across the boardwalk, we could have the same operator that's operating the drawbridge on A Street also operate that footbridge. And they, the camera units aren't, wouldn't be that expensive. I use them myself right now. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Next on the list is Susan Hunley. Susan, can you give me your home address, please? 632 Michigan Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor and Council, thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm going to discuss certain concerns I have as a member of the Library Board of Trustees. First, let me say that I take my position as a Library Board member very seriously, as I am sure the other Board members do. Before I decided to speak tonight, I struggled with the ethical aspect as a Library Board member and or my responsibility to the community as a whole. So I turned to the Director of Public Libraries for the state, Mike Cross, for advice, and he told me the foremost focus of the Library Board is to the community. He reassured me that discussing my concerns was ethically and morally right since I had shared these concerns first with the Library Board to try to resolve the issues internally without success so it was appropriate to make them public. The first concern I encountered as a trustee was the lack of respect shown toward all of you, the council and the mayor. This happens at every library board meeting with the library director and certain board members making disrespectful comments directed at the council and mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have attended many other council committee meetings and never heard a department head nor any committee member talk in a derogatory manner about the council and mayor. I do not believe there is another department in the city that would be this, respect, this disrespectful to you during a formal meeting. While the library does maintain autonomy from the city departments, from other city departments for certain aspects of business, I do not believe that this should allow the Sheboygan, am I doing that? <laughs> Seems crackly. What's crackly? Should I move it or? Get away. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you That's hear okay. me? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I used up time. That's okay. We'll give you a little more. <laughs> okay, thank you. I do not believe that there is another department in the city that would be this, this, this disrespectful to you during a formal meeting. While the library does maintain autonomy from other city departments for certain aspects of business, I do not believe that this should allow the Sheboygan Common Council and the mayor of Sheboygan to be the focus of constant ridicule and criticism from the library director and certain board members. Another issue of great concern for me is the recent decision of, by the library board to approve a five-year employment contract with the library director. To begin with, I do not believe the board was given adequate time to consider something of this magnitude. We were notified on December 9th and voted on December 15th. During the six days, we were instructed in a letter from the library director, and I'm quoting, the draft employment agreement is the subject of closed session deliberation at the two meetings that had been personnel on board scheduled for December 15th. Thus, it is not subject to public distribution or consultation at this time. Neither should library board members discuss its contents with anyone other than myself, other library members, or city attorney Steve McLean until the library board acted on it. Having now discussed this with the director of libraries from the state, he told me that the library director did not have the right to restrict us from seeking more information since it was not related to her job performance, which is private, but rather it pertained, I hope I'm not doing that. Uh -uh. 
but rather pertain to her compensation, which is public. If I had known this, I would have discussed this with him, since he is the head of all state public libraries, the council, the mayor, rather than just our city attorney, library director, and other board members. I feel that the board was misled and information that we needed to make an informed decision was denied to us. When I spoke to Mike Cross today, he told me that I have been the only library board member from Sheboygan to be in contact with him. This also greatly concerns me. I am sure others on the board would benefit from discussing all our options with the head of Wisconsin Public Libraries. One thing I strongly suggest is for our city attorney or mayor to contact legal counsel from the League of Wisconsin Municipalities regarding this five-year contract with the library director. According to the attorney that I spoke with, for the league, a request must come from the city attorney or the mayor. Then the league will do the research required to see if the contract is legal and they will give the city a written opinion. Since this will not cost the city anything because Sheboygan pays dues to be part of the League of Municipalities, I cannot find one reason not to do this as soon as possible. Considering the controversial nature of the library board's decision to enter into a five-year contract with the library director, while no other city department head has a contract, I feel the matter cannot be ignored. The common council, mayor, and city attorney are all elected by the residents of Sheboygan to do the will of the people. I believe the people have spoken loud and clear. Thank you very much. And right under five minutes. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, next on the list is Henry Capitillo. <clears throat> And Henry, could you give me your home address again, please? Yes, that's 1619 North 38th Street. Okay. And that's the town of Sheboygan. Thank you. And I'm here today as the spokesperson for the uh, Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance. And there was an article in the paper already regarding the, uh, the, the uh, director's uh, position, the contract there. But what I want to talk about is I did attend several meetings of the library board uh, prior to the issuing of that statement. And some of the things that they discussed during those meetings were, was concerning to me because um, they were looking at a reduction in, I think, in the paper that uh, was on the 21st of $200,000. And during that period of time, they were discussing about uh, a 1.5% increase for their salaries. And in fact, they had said that they had set aside 3% for 2005. And the reason that they were looking at 1.5% was because apparently that's what the city was looking at for their negotiations. And that if they didn't, if they did end up paying more, that they would then go back and allow the uh, 3%. Um, that totaled up to almost over $100,000. And when you're looking at a $200,000 reduction in, in your costs, and you're talking about giving everybody a 1.5% raise and spending $108,000 or $105,000 that you could be using to offset your, your loss, um, I thought, you know, does this make sense? And when you, when you look further, of some of the other things that they were talking about was also um, the unemployment insurance and the cost of that. And I think Alderman Manny was the only one that uh, I think brought up a concern and had somebody actually come in to show that if a person was did did take the retirement, that they still could be eligible for the unemployment. So that was an issue that uh, I'm glad Alderman Manny had brought up and they looked at that. Um, the other concern was some of the things that they were looking at doing, um, the retirement of uh, some of the people. And when you think of some of the costs that they were looking at, for example, um, in, the, uh, in the Sheboygan Press, the, one of the, uh, the deputy director is retiring. And if you're looking at the age of the person, and, and I have nothing against any of the staff from the library. This is just happens to, to be the position and the amount of money that's paid there and some of the uh, benefits that are being looked at, some of the early retirement. You're looking at 100% uh, of the, uh, the health care costs that are going to be paid. If, if you look at how much that would be equivalent to if the person is going to be 65 is 57, just taking some, some nominal figures of and looking at what health care costs have increased over the last several years, you're talking about a 30% increase in health care. That's pretty much proven already. If the person pays $200 per, per month on their health policy, by the time that person retires and is, is the 65 and is eligible for Medicare, 
the library would have paid $74,435,000 for that health care cost. That's only 200. If you're looking at that cost being $600, which I would think that a lot of the health care coverage is, is pretty much around there, the premium for, I think, a person that's married, you're looking at, with, with the 30% increase on, on an annual basis, just for that one position, you're talking at $223,000 that you would pay out. Now, this is just one person. They're talking about eight individuals, and I'm pretty sure that not all of them are 57, or, and there might be some that are in their 60s, I don't know. But if you're looking at that, I think that someone should have, and I don't know if they did, go and look and crunch the numbers like, like this and look at what the impact would be over a period of time. So if you're looking at cost savings, I would say, why an increase in wages? Why not a wage freeze? Um, instead of looking at uh, retirement, uh, what, what happened to layoffs? I mean, in the private sector, I'm pretty sure if Kohler was going to be uh, shutting down one of their lines, they're not going to say to everybody, you know, we're going to lay you off and we're going to give you 100% uh, health care coverage until you're 65. Boy, I'll tell you, everybody would be walking out of there with a smile on their face. But, you know, that doesn't happen. You know why? It's the private sector. They have to compete. They have to be accountable for, for the money that they spend. GM, just not more than a month ago, is not paying health care costs anymore for their retired employees. The reason why? They can't afford it. The reason is they are now the number two automaker in the world. The number one automaker is Toyota. Excuse me, so, your time is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next on the list would be Milton Storm. Milton, can I have your home address, please? Yes, it's 1736 Marvin Court. And you will have five minutes. Oh, I'll try. <laughs> but, I'll, but I'll ask for an extension. Uh, where to begin? I'm here to give the other side viewpoint of the ethics, the ethics and the conduct of this common council and what I hear about the city of Sheboygan. I go to banks, I go to businesses, I go to grocery stores, I go to churches, and they're just shaking their heads since this new mayor came in here and some of the council members. The conduct of the mayor and some of the council members was in question when uh, Dan Berg was accused of things, and he accused back forth. Uh, the alderman apologizes to the mayor, and that's Reverend Manning. And while he did very good, uh, but he only said, I'm sorry, at the beginning, or at the end, I'm sorry. But when he said his uh, editorial letter, it said, this is uh, much ado about nothing. Well, I would advise him to reread the first chapter of Romans, where it says, Lord, I've sinned, but I am without excuse. So don't give me excuses first and then go and apologize. What he should have done is apologize to his constituents, and he should have also apologized to the citizens and other voters of the city of Sheboygan. And just above that, I did attend the listening session, if that's what you call it, at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, where I met the uh, Jack Westfall, or doctor. Uh, he says that the silly city hall accusa accusations are embarrassment to all. And first, please let me know the facts and stand alone. However, I must make it clear that I am a candidate for the second district. I don't know why people come up here to give campaign speeches. I mean, I think that they should do out there in public. And why waste the taxpayers' money coming up here and giving them all these statistics and facts? And then he says that. Uh, Oh, that uh, he quotes Abraham Lincoln, and he says that each of these rivals was certain at that time of his superior skills over the country fool from Illinois. That's wrong. If he's talking mo more than one rival, you don't say his, you say their. But that's the uh, Sheboygan Press. So Sheboygan Press and I have never gotten along. Well, for his information, uh, Lincoln also said the best way to destroy your enemies is to make them a friend. I've got the goods on Dr. Westfall. I have found from a good, reliable source that he was in some business deal. I don't know if it was with Frank Ribbage or not, and he lost his shirt. 
And if it wasn't been for his uh, partner to bail him out, he would have uh, been in a hootskull or whatever. So I would suggest that people check him out before you vote for him. I've been the subject of many uh, insults here. I come to uh, meetings here. I am an electronic technician. I'm a member of the International Society of Electronic Technicians. My Wisconsin number is WI-144 or 146. I have an identical twin brother, and from 1953 to 1958, while I was teaching radar at the Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, he was at Las Almas, New Mexico, uh, working as a computer analyst. He has two master's degrees, and he's considered a PhD. And then he came here to Madison, and he uh, was considered a professor there. And he finished up at Naperville, Illinois, at Fermilad, where we split the electron. Just to give you things what I have to compete with. My, I have also an older brother, and I don't know how Jeff Rettke got out of the uh, inspection committee, building inspection committee, but I see all the new aldermans get on chairmanship. My older brother down in Milwaukee is a licensed architect, and he, when he retired here about 12 years ago, the state of Wisconsin sent him up here to correct all the code violations at the uh, Morningside residential home. I, as a television technician, I served a uh, television set for uh, William Wilde and Stephanie Wilde when Mr. Wilde was in a wheelchair, and uh, he was at that time building an elevator. I also served for Mrs. A. Matt Warner when she was in her late 80s, and when she found out that I was writing letters to the editor, she had the most unkind words for the Sheboygan Press. She was a bowler, and they owned the press. Then she married Werner, she said, and then Werner took over, and they sold it to somebody else. And I think if she would know today that the Gannett News Service was, had the Sheboygan press, those dry bones would just raise right out of the grave. I would just like, if I have time, to read some of the things that I get subject to is letters to the editor. I'm a premier editor writer because I learned that in 1948 when I attended the University of Wisconsin Extension up there in Maryland, Wassa, how to write letters to the Excuse editor. Excuse me, Milton, the five minutes are up. Oh, can I have just to read this letter? I'll move to extend. There's a motion and a second to extend indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell some good jokes, too. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Storm. F five minutes? There's a motion. I'm sorry, we seconded it. Thank you. There's Alderman Sarah, did you wish to speak or was that? Uh, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Call the roll. This is to extend five minutes. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? <coughs> Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Montemayor? No. Racky? No. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. And Vanderweel? Aye. Uh, 12 ayes and 3 noes. Motion carries. Floor extended. Five minutes, sir. Uh, the thing is, I don't like to be embarrassed or insulted when I come to these meetings. And it's really uh, Mrs. Montemayor who called her husband citizen. I had spoken here about uh, Denny Moyer. And I'm sitting right back in the last booth there, and he says that I didn't know what I was talking about. And then he said to me that I talk like an asshole, pure and simple. And I've got Mr. Storm, we appreciate what you have to say. I would ask that you not be taking things personally and that you please refrain from your vocabulary. Well, I'm being sorry, involved. but I mean, I don't have to be insulted. You, you don't have to say the word, sir, okay? Oh, I well, will call you out of order if you continue to do that. Please continue. Okay. But I don't have to be, come here and be insulted, okay? And this is a letter that I received from, I think it's James Baumgart. It is not addressed or signed and no return address. Mr. Storm, I've read your letters in the Sheboygan Press over the years. You should have checked the Bible to see what it has to say about self-righteous, judgmental, and prejudiced people. In your recent letter, you mentioned lousy Democrats. Democrats were giving us Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, workers and unemployment, compensation, work rights, and so forth. If the work of Democrats is so bad, you should send it back to your Social Security. 
And then he tells me that I'm a one-issue candidate. God works through many people with many views, he says. The programs about have been enacted with guidance and concerns for others. Maybe your lousy Democrats' obsession is being critically, divinely guided work and not pleasurable in the eyes of God. Sincerely, no, one who thinks and studies before acting. Here's my reply if I know you call me up. The word lousy is derived from the word louse. The dictionary refine, defines it as a small parasitic pest and insect that feeds on other animals or infects books or plants. The plural of louse is lice. The letter writer's lice on the top of his head must have moved into his head and infected his brain. I did not say lousy Democrats. I said lousy Democratic politician. God, in my knowledge, works through most people in the teachings of Jesus, not some lousy democratic thinker. There is no person so bad that God cannot save, and by the same reasoning, there is no person so good that doesn't need a little saving grace of Almighty God. Thank you. Thank you, Milton. Next on the list and final would be Dimple Adams. And Dimple, I need your home address, please. 1424 Virginia Avenue. And you will Is have that okay? five, five minutes. Okay, Susan, can you let me know when I'm down to one minute left, please? Certainly. Okay, um, I'm glad to be here tonight. I thank the mayor and Susan and Attorney McLean and the council. I'd like to wish you all a very happy new year. And I look forward to see what's going to happen in 2006. I... You know, I thought back over the last year today, and I had thought that when 2006 rolled around, that this spring, that we would be, um, you know, getting into a new police station. Well, that's not going to happen. And I don't think that it's going to happen in 2007 either. That's one of my disappointments. Another disappointment this year was the um, doing away of the agreement that we had with the chamber. After 20 years, I would like to think that we could have worked that out because now I think that our tourism dollars are going to be going for salary and learning a new method rather than going to the chamber and having an information center built out at the new location. And people like Denny Moyer, who promotes Sheboygan, I just wonder what the legislation day is going to be like over in Madison that we've had the last 20 something years that was a good promotion for Sheboygan without the chamber. Is it going to happen? I don't know. And now we have come to another big fray and a fracas over the library. Well, I moved here in 1976 and one of the nicest things about Sheboygan has always been the Mead Public Library. Um, it's one of the nicest libraries of all of the places that I have ever lived. And it probably has more services. And I've never questioned how that came to be or whatever because I'm not library knowledgeable. Okay, what I am is a widowed 61-year-old lady that's living over there on her property on Virginia Avenue one half block from Sheridan Park and one half block from where they wanted to put in an ethanol plant that I fought off this year. But I wanted the police station at Sheridan Park. I lost that battle, but I still thought we were going to get a police station. But I have lost trust. Now I got my tax bill. Everybody's talking about how their tax bill went down. Mine went up. And sir, I am paying more taxes than you are, sir, as mayor. And I live at 1424 Virginia Avenue. And I talked to um, the tax assessor about my tax bill. And, you know, she gave me the reasons. Um, but anyway, it just, it just befoggles my mind that, but, you know, I don't mind paying the tax bill because of the services that we have. But I think the services are getting in trouble because of what I've seen happen this year with this administration because this administration wants us to be puppets and they want to pull the strings. And when we have votes in the council that are 11 to five against something that they don't like, then you know they're muttering things and saying things 
that can be heard. And then somehow or another, there was an investigation, which was fine, because no one knew about that until the press. And I don't know how the press got that story about the investigation from the altar persons, but it had been dropped. And then all of a sudden, you know, here is, we're embarrassed as a city because of that, that argument. Well, now we come down to the library board. Now, I don't presume to, I don't know Mrs. Winkle. I've never met Mrs. Winkle. One minute left. Thank you. But I do know Bernie Markovich. I have known Bernie Markovich for almost the entire time that I have lived here in Sheboygan. And his reputation is impeccable. He would not do anything to hurt the city and to hurt that library. And I have faith in Bernie. And my fear is if you go through with this resolution tonight and say, get rid of those six members of the library board, then what, are, what kind of puppets are we going to get for the library board? And I want you all to think about that very much as you go to vote on that resolution tonight. I don't think that that's the way we want to start off 2006. I think we should keep that board intact. We don't always have to agree on everything. We don't want this council to be 16 zip with every vote. That wouldn't be wonderful. That would be strange. You've got to have different concerns and different thinking. Definitely. That's why you're here. Definitely your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it. That's it. That's Thank it. you. Thank you, everyone. Pardon me? Yes. Thank you. We're moving to the mayor's appointments, which we skipped. So we're going back. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. To the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee, Mayor Perez, Richard Gebhardt, representative of the village, municipal judge, ex officio non-voting, municipal court clerk, ex officio non-voting, uh, terms to expire 4-30-2006, signed by the mayor. It lies over. <clears throat> and uh, there's a series of correspondence here. One, the first one uh, in sequence is from Francia Barnard, who is the Sheboygan Area School District representative to the Mead Public Library mm -hmm. Board of Directors, uh, advising the mayor that she'll be leaving her position on the Mead Public Library Board that the last meeting she'll attend as a board member will be in January 2006, that she's moving to soon to Bailey's Harbor and uh, would no longer be residing in Sheboygan. Uh, subsequent to that, there's a letter to the mayor dated <coughs> December 12th uh, from Superintendent Sheehan advising that due to the resignation of Francia Barnard, the Sheboygan Area School District is requesting the appointment of Sue Dennis to serve as designee for the district serving on the board of the Mead Public Library. Please call if you have any questions. And then uh, <clears throat> today's date, the, the mayor submits the following appointment for your consideration. Sue Dennis to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Francia Barnard, whose term expires 4-30-07, signed by the mayor. And that too will lie over. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next on the agenda, we have a presentation on docking the USS Edson in Sheboygan. Gentlemen, Mr. Caswell and uh, Chad Mr. Jack Thor. Excuse me, Mr. Caswell. We have a we have a mic over here. I'd like for you to use that right here. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for inviting us to have a, a chance, chance to speak to the Common Council and the citizens of Sheboygan about the USS Edson project. It's something that I think can do a lot for Sheboygan, and we'd like to have a, a PowerPoint presentation given to you tonight to uh, fill you in on what the ship can actually do for Sheboygan. I'd like to have our executive director of the museum give the presentation tonight, Chad Source. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Um, Dick, if you could turn off that first bank of lights like we did last time so I could see the presentation. 
but this will real, give you a real quick overview of what we want to do and what we can bring to you. <clears throat> what, we can bring, what can we bring to Sheboygan? Well, first of all, it's going to be a way to draw more tourists and more tourist dollars into the town. It's going to be a living museum, a veterans memorial, a unique insight into Navy life, a destination for reunion groups, which I'll touch on later, and it's going to be very important, and a place to hold gathering and social functions for any small groups that may want to use it. Here is our ship, the USS Edson. She is a destroyer of the Forrest Sherman class, 418 feet long, 45 feet as a width. She draws about 15 feet of water, and she was in service for almost 30 years from 1959 to 1989, uh, 88. Currently, she is in Philadelphia, and since 1990, she has been registered as a national landmark. There aren't too many Navy ships that are allowed to be national landmarks. For instance, the USS Wisconsin is not because she was so heavily modified. So this is a unique vessel that way. The ship is named after Major General Merritt Edson, who led a, a valiant defense in Guadalcanal during World War II of Henderson Field. This was the most strategic point of that island. He took 800 Marine Raiders and held out over 2,500 Japanese. This was the most important battle, and had he lost this, the field would have fell into the hands of the Japanese, and that campaign would have gone out a whole lot longer. For this, he was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. He was also to earn two Navy crosses, a Silver Star, and two Legion of Merits. There are not many Navy ships that are named after Marine heroes. Normally, that is reserved for Navy only, so this is, once again, a unique ship that way. The ship does have a very storied career. She served with Destroyer Squadron 13. She had three Southeast Asian deployments, so she was on station in Vietnam. She provided close in gun support for the troops. She was nicknamed the Destroyer Top Gun by Naval Gunfire Spotters. She was also called the Destroyer because when troops on land would call for help, they'd call for the Destroyer. And invariably, it was the USS Edson that was on station. In one altercation with a shore battery of the North Vietnamese, she took three shells that damaged her smokestack slightly. The North Vietnamese said she was sunk. It wasn't. One kind of cool little fact about the Edson is she was in an episode of The Twilight Zone, so she's a Hollywood star. And I did check at your library. You do have this episode there, so anybody can check it out if you want. The 30 Fathom Grave. There were two destroyers in this episode, the USS Mullinex and the USS Edson. The exterior photos that you see of the ship are the Mullinex, and the interior shots, such as these two right here, are of the Edson. Originally, when we approached the city, we talked about the USS Des Moines, which was a heavy cruiser, and now we switched to the Edson, so the question is why. One of the big reasons is it's a football field shorter. She draws seven feet less of water. The cost, I like this because i got to raise all of the money. It, the Edson is only going to cost us about 5 to $7 million, where the Des Moines was going in excess of $24 million. There was a lot of renovation. One of the reasons for this is the Edson was a museum ship in New York. She was recently returned to the Navy, and one of the conditions was that the ship had to be dry docked at the Intrepid Museum's expense. So it's, it's in museum-grade shape right now. Our naval consultant just said he could tow it here, and it would be open for business tomorrow. The Edson can be dry docked in Sturgeon Bay if it needs to, but the hull should have an integrity of at least 60 years before any repairs need to be done to it. And minimal dredging is going to be needed to be done to berth the Edson here. There is a size comparison of the two ships. You can really see why we like the Edson a little more than the Des Moines at this point. Educational value. We talked about it being a museum and a memorial. One of the cool things that we're going to be able to do is kids will be able to come on board, scout groups, school groups, church groups, and they can spend a night on the Edson. They'll learn what it is like to sleep in a Navy bunk. They'll learn what it's like to take up a duty station, damage control, all of that kind of interesting stuff that might turn somebody into wanting to join the Navy. We're going to have guided and self-guided tours, so it will become a living, breathing part of the community. The, the, self, or the guided tours... We're going to try and get our tour guides to be kind of in character. So when you come onto the ship, you won't just be able to walk on. You're going to ask that to have permission to board the ship. The general quarters alarm might go off, and you might have to report to a duty station. The ship is going to come alive. One of the things that we've talked about is a naval heritage trail. This is very similar to a lot of the lighthouse trails that go around the Great Lakes. It can start down in Chicago with the U-505 at the Museum of Science and Industry, go a little bit north to the Great Lakes Naval Station where they have a museum, 
Waukegan, Illinois, is attempting to get the USS Connolly, which is the hometown of Admiral Connolly. You'll come north to Sheboygan right here with the USS Edson, and finally end in Manitowoc with the USS Cobia. This is something that we think can be very popular and very profitable to all of these cities involved. Navy reunions. There are over 5,000 military reunion groups, and 2,300 of these are in Navy. Now, they like to go where a ship is. So obviously, Sheboygan is a very attractive site for them. The Navy absolutely loves this city when they came here to visit. The USS Kidd, which is in Baton Rouge, has between 30 and 40 reunion groups a year. Now, these reunion groups, they don't come and just spend one night. They'll spend on an average between two and three nights in the city. So Blue Harbor, your convention center, will all benefit from this. The Tin Can Sailors Association. Here is where the maintenance of the ship is really going to be done. This is a fraternal order of all destroyer sailors. They will actually pay us to come on board and fix the ship. These groups will set aside weekends called field days to where they'll come on, do routine maintenance, any upgrades that we want. They also will set aside money for all of the destroyers that are currently museums. Right now, they have $40,000 set aside for any group that gets the Edson. And every year afterwards, they will set aside $20,000. And there are 25,000 members in this group. So it's a large organization that can help us out. Funding for the Edison, obviously, is very important. The most important thing is we require a birthing site because it's real hard for us to raise money if nobody knows where the ship is going to go. A professional fundraising company will be brought in to really help us do the big money. Our initial efforts are not going to really focus here, although we will try to, but we're going to also the regional, state, and national areas. Fundraisers are going to include a membership drive, annual funds, sponsorships of pro prominent companies that are in this region. And long-term goals are plan giving and estate planning. Now here's just a few ships that are around the country. Just a highlight of you know, the Baton Rouge, the USS Kidd. She did sustain no damage during Hurricane Katrina. These ships are very well built. The USS Alabama is a battleship. The North Carolina is very unique and very important to us because her executive director, Captain Shu, is a former commanding officer of the Edson. He also is a Wisconsin native. The USS Midway is one of the most recent additions to the museums. And she was thinking the Midway was going to draw about 100,000 people. This past year, she drew in excess of 250,000 visitors to their ship. Very popular. The Cobia, a lot of you are familiar with, just a little bit north of here. And the USS Turner Joy is our sister ship. She's a twin ship to the Edson. And she is leading the revitalization of the Bremerton Harbor area. Now here you can see where we plan on berthing the Edson. It's just on the south pier and kind of a <coughs> little bit east of where the rocket pad is right now. And the, the bow would be pointed out towards the lake. <coughs> These next two shots are models that we superimposed into where we would like to do it. The ship isn't there, in case any of you, it, it's not done. <laughs> we didn't sneak it in here last night for this, don't worry. So this is looking north from the Yacht Club. And this view is on the walkway on that south pier. So you can see, although 418 feet is a pretty sizable ship, there is still a lot of pier both to the east and to the west. So that's, pretty, uh, that's one of our major presentations right there. Working together is what we want to wrap up with. This has to be a partnership between the city and us. We are willing to do a lot of the work, but we need your support and your help. And how can we do that? the contingent lease. That is really what we're seeking to move forward on tonight. What we have to do to, do the, to make this successful is we have to make a feasibility study. And this will determine, yes, you know what, we can do this both financially and non-financially. We must obtain all of the environmental and governmental approvals, including the safe disposal of all dredge material. And we have to raise the required funds. What can the city do? The major thing is the in-kind donation of the birthing site. This is, a, this is a sizable amount of land that we're looking at. And it's, it's a big deal to us. Political support, obviously just by you as an organization saying, yeah, this is something that we think is going to support us, that's going to be good for us, that is a big step towards making this a success. And there is no money needed from the city in order to, to make this happen. In fact, the Navy requires that we be self-sufficient. 
So that is pretty much what I have in a, in a condensed little form. So I hope that answers a lot of your questions. In your packets, you have a copy of what I just presented, along with a point paper, some testimonials from the USS Kidd and the Turner Joy, a history from Sheboygan of the Navy. And I think that is about it. Thank you very much. Put the lights. Um. Thank you, sir. Alderman Berg, would you like to inform the public of your listening sessions, et cetera? Yes, thank you very much, Your Honor. Um, the uh, Marina and Harbor Committee will be conducting two public listening sessions. The first one will be tomorrow uh, at 5.30 in the Mead Library uh, conference room. I believe that's the first floor room. And uh, we will also uh, be having an additional listening session on Monday the 16th at 5.30 in the evening, and that will be in City Hall in the third floor conference room. I think also in addition, other events that have planned, I believe there's a static display at the library that will be staffed uh, from time to time by some of the volunteers for the ensign, and they will also be, I understand, starring on the mayor's TV show on Friday. Uh, so. Uh, there will be, a, hopefully, uh, time for some excitement to build and, and hopefully some good input from our citizens. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I would just could please make a comment. Um, we had the opportunity last summer to go to Remington, Washington, where our son is stationed at the Bangor Submarine Base, and we were able to have the privilege of touring the sister city, the Turner Joy. And let me, uh, that was just something superb. People were coming in and out of that ship like you just couldn't believe. And here, this was a base, a naval base, where other people were coming from the outside onto this base and to see the Turner Joy. And I think. Um, we would be very proud to be able to have the Turner Joy as one of the sister ships if we were able to have the Epson here in Sheboygan. That would be a great honor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Okay. Give him a couple of minutes. Okay, we will move on to a hearing that we have scheduled for tonight for the vacation and discontinuance of the easterly 220 feet of Germain Avenue east of South Taylor Drive Frontage Road. Is there anyone that would like to address the council on this hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the hearing be closed. There's a motion and a second to close the hearing. Any discussion on that? There being none, please call the roll. Oh, you just vote. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda. <clears throat> items 19.1 through 19.6, which is probably the shortest item we've ever dealt with on the consent agenda. <laughs> Alderman Groff. I believe it is. So with that, I will move that. Are all, all ROs be accepted and filed? All the RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass a resolution. Second. Motion to second to approve the consent agenda. <clears throat> Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Groff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Racky. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Susha. Van Akron, aye. Vanderweel, aye. and Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 19-7, to be referred. Report of officers 2, 19, 9, by the library board president, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from Henry Capitillo on behalf of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance regarding the Meat Public Library. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> On behalf of the library board, I move that we accept and file the document. There's a motion and a second to accept and file. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? 
Motion carries. 1910 through 1919 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 1920 to 1924 to be referred. Matters laid over, nine, 1726 RO number 4480506 oh, by the City Plan Commission vacating a portion of Germain Avenue east of South Taylor Drive frontage road. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, um, 1924, I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage and that we accept and file the uh, plan commission um, information. There's a motion to accept and file and pass the, uh, the ordinance. There's a second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, and Deberg. 15 eyes. Motion carries. 1824, resolution number 2090506 by Alderman Groff, authorizing an agreement with the Sheboygan Press for publication of the Common Council proceedings and city advertising for the period January 1st, 06 to December 31st, 06. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. <laughs> There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? No. And E. Berg? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1825, resolution number 2100506 by Alderman Stefan authorized a transfer of appropriations in the 05 budget. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to make an amendment. Proceed. Um, we're still going to take $300,000 from the general fund judgments and settlements account. 125,000 will go to the general fund general contingency and the remainder of 175,000 will go to the unreserved funds account. I would make that motion. Second. Uh, motion to amend and a second. Any discussion on the amendment? If I could, Your Honor. Pardon me? Yes. I, I just wanted to explain. Um, basically what we're doing is we're taking money as we collected last year from the Matlin funds and, and putting them aside for this year. Uh, it, we had some discussions at finance. I, I talked quite a bit with the mayor and Rich Gebhardt about it. Their concern was not so much the transfer of funds, but my personal view was, I, I think we need some of these monies because down the road we need, uh, we might have some liability if we lose our accounts, uh, for our contract arbitrations. And uh, their concern was, you know, putting this money aside and using it for contracts if it's one-time money. Uh, that's down the road. Tonight we're not discussing what we're gonna use it for, we're just putting it aside so it's there for any contingencies. Typically we have had $150,000 to $200,000 in the contingency fund. This would put $150,000 in there. Only 125 from this one, but there was 25 in the budget. So I would, there will be some monies available. It won't take care of any of our problems, but I think it will help us out, and that's my goal. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. That's a good explanation. Any other discussion on that? Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. When we discussed this in finance at the beginning, I was concerned about doing this. However, with this amendment and talking with the chairman of the finance committee, I can support this change. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll on the amendment only. And the amendment, Alderman Stefan, would be to take 125000 put it towards the general fund, and 175000 to unreserved, correct? Contingency fund. General fund contingency. Contingency? Right. And the other to the unreserved fund? Right. Thank you. Um, Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. 
and Serta. Aye. 13 ayes and two noes. That's on the amendment. Motion carries. Now, uh, roll call on the motion as amended. Alderman Stephan? I would move the motion passed as amended. Second. There's a motion second to pass as amended. Under discussion, Alderman Kusha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess that the reason I have a, a problem with this is because I think we look at it from the standpoint of we are here representing the city and the taxpayers. And I think as soon as we start setting money aside for arbit potential arbitration awards, what we are doing is we're starting to step over the bounds of where our role ends. I don't feel that by putting money aside that the unions will undoubtedly put in front of the arbitrator saying, look, they already plan on losing arbitration. They've already planned by setting this money aside in an account for us. Therefore, you should rule in our favor and give us what we're demanding. I think this is wrong because what you're doing is you're giving the unions more leverage and that's not why we're here. We're here to represent the city and the taxpayers and I think that's the angle that we need to come in at. So I will not support this um, because I think you're just basically handing over an arbitrary, arbitrary award and I, I don't agree with it. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? Alderman Stephan. Uh, I appreciate all the person Shusha's thoughts. I don't believe they're doing that. The arbitration what is it? arguments have already been in. They're at the arbitrator. They're waiting to be decided upon. It's not like they're going to call them tomorrow and say, wait, wait, we want to add more information. Um, and we're not putting it in. If we were putting it in a general fund, as we have in the past, we have 1.5% from there correctly now for specifically for in the general fund for salary contingencies. This is not going in that fund. It's going in a general contingency fund. And the council will decide at a later point. Even if we lose the arbitrations, it doesn't say you have the money won't come out of here without the council voting on it. Right. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. Alderman Graf. Thank you. Um, I will be supporting this because we're, we're putting into the general contingency fund an amount that is equal to what we had in the past. And we've always needed certain emergency situations like one year I can recall when um, lightning struck the, um, the towers upstairs and we had to replace uh, one of the parts of the computer and so forth. And there's always those little things that you have to plan for. And that's what the contingency fund is, is to be used for. It's not for <coughs> our wants, but it's for what we need to spend it on when and if uh, something happens. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Any more discussion? Please call the roll. This is, this is the um, resolution as amended. Kittleson? Aye. Manning? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1826, resolution number 2110506 by Alderman Graf, Stefan, Montemayor, Susha, and Davis, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman Graf. You know, um, that item, as well as 1827, um, which is also a, a resolution authorizing transfers of appropriations in the 2005 budget, and 1828 which is um, a resolution to authorize revenue adjust, estimate adjustments and transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget. I would move that all three resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put all three resolutions upon their passage. Under discussion? There, there being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1841, General Ordinance Number 70506 by Alderman Manny, Ratke, Meyer, and Sigali, repealing and recreating the Municipal Code so as to authorize the Committee on Law and Licensing to conduct license and permit suspension revocation proceedings. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on behalf of Law and Licensing, I move to uh, put upon passage ordinance number 700506. Second. Motion to second to put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just hoping someone could explain why we are changing it. 
Alderman Manny. Thank you. Uh, this has come directly from requests from the Electoral Examiner's Board, for one. Uh, a couple of issues. Number one, there are few members of that board. So when an issue comes up for them that might deal with a license, uh, it, it's hard for them to get adequate numbers to deal with it, to have a majority quorum. Uh, secondarily, it puts the responsibility for such decisions upon the elected officials as opposed to appointed officials, by and large. I think there's only one alderman. Is that right, Jeff? Thank you, Mr. Rafferty, uh, on that Board of Appeals. That's from whence it's come. We thought holistically this would help the city in other uh, areas where there might be problems and questions with those same kinds of issues. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Any other questions, comments? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1849 General Ordinance Number 710506 by Alderman Susha, Vanderweel, Radke, Meyer, and Montemayor relating to the prohibited parking in time zones to add bus only parking Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. to various locations. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Montemayor, you were first. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Would we be able to have Ron McDonald explain some of this to us? Because it's a wonderful new plan. Yes, uh, Mr. McDonald, would you please come forward? And we have Mr. Alderman Sigali, do you have a question for us? Ma'am? No. No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is for a new bus route we're starting. Actually, the route started uh, this morning. You know, what we're doing is we're uh, putting a route out there primarily uh, to haul passengers from Memorial Hospital uh, into and out of the downtown area. They're going to be having about 100 employees parking in the downtown area during a remodeling project that they're doing over the next several years. We thought this would give us an opportunity to get the uh, people in the downtown area, hopefully spending some money in the downtown as they're, they're traveling to and, and from work. The bus stops that we're asking for is, is because of the number of people getting on at these few locations. Typically, transit stops at numerous locations around the city, picking up just you know one or two passengers at, at several stops. These are a little bit different. Where we'll get several passengers at just a few stops. So we wanted to have areas where we could be out of traffic for you know two or three minutes, uh, unlike what we normally do. We pick up and we're gone real quickly. That, that's the idea for these parking zones, but the, 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 it's for a new bus route uh, to provide services uh, from the downtown area to Memorial Hospital, and we're expecting to generate about 50,000 passenger trips a year on this particular new route. Paul Masusha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is the best part about this situation. Do you recall offhand approximately how much money the city will be generating from the extra 100 parking spots that we'll be renting in the downtown area plus the uh, revenue from the bus route, approximately how much more that will be? Combined with the parking utility and the transit department, uh, we're looking at it receiving about $10,000 in revenues. That's mm. monthly, by the way. Monthly, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> I saved the best for last. <laughs> Any more questions for Mr. McDonald? Thank you, sir. Okay, let's see. We're ready to take the roll. Sure. Uh, Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 1925, 19-25, a communication from Stephen Hushshield Hush stating that he opposes a proposed resolution asking for the immediate resignation of the six Mead Public Library members who voted in favor of the library director's contract. Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move the uh, communication be accepted and filed. Second. There's a motion to accept and file. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1926, a re uh, resolution by Alderman Ratke, Meyer, and Susha asking for the immediate resignation of Mead Public Library Board Members Bernard Markovich, Joe Bonet, Marilyn Taple, Sharon Quicker, Cynthia, Cynthia Van Akron, and Francia Bernard. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and second. Put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, did a lot of soul searching on this one. I had a lot of people in the community come up and talk to me about this since it surfaced in various different areas as I'm moving around the town. And what bothers me is a guaranteed salary for five years of $94,075 minimum over the next five years. I mean, it, that's the minimum part of it. Can't go down, can't go up. The city employs 589 people, including the elected officials, the water utility, and everybody. No one person has, or I should say 588 of those people do not have an individual contract guaranteeing them any type of an income through the city. Um, as I did ask some things, I found out, and I want to state clearly that this is not, uh, as it's been inferred here, that we're trying to throw people out. I'm simply asking that these people come to their senses and just been resigned from the library board after this. I did some exhaustive research today and over several days and found that <clears throat> if uh, the library director would quit, her unused vacation time and sick leave would go with her. Now, if uh, I'm correct on this, and Ed Surik, you and I have talked on several occasions, if uh, any other uh, city employee leaves, or department head specifically now, they would be entitled to just their unused vacation. Would that be correct, Ed? Okay. She would get her sick leave and unpaid leave. If she dies, it's the same as quitting. She gets her unused vacation and sick leave. How many people when they die, Ed? Okay. Sure. Excuse me. We, if, we're, if we need a department head to answer, please request and we'll call them up. Mr. Sark. Mr. Sark. Yeah, correction, if it's, if it's voluntary, they would. Okay. So if she voluntarily leaves, now if she is terminated with cause, she gets her unused vacation and sick leave. What about any other? Same thing. Mr. Right? Sir, please, sir. And just stay there till we excuse you. <laughs> yeah, I'm standing for a while. What was the question again? Um, voluntary, or uh, she's fired with cause, unused vacation, sick leave the library director would get another city department head, would they be entitled to that same they treatment? They would not. Both uh, sick leave and, okay. Correct. So that's, that's in measure right here. And without cause, she would be compensated the remainder of her compensation for the contract period. Now, is there any such thing in, in place, any such arrangement in place for any other department head? No, they'd be paid till termination date. Till the termination date. So that's above and beyond that step as well. I get, thank, thank you, Mr. Sirk. I, I guess the, the problem I have with this is a contract has been signed by a library board and the city has no contract with any other, any other person and its employee individually. And the, and the people out there are looking at this number and saying, holy cow, the librarian gets $94,075 a year guaranteed for the next five years. And, and the people are just screaming that this can't be. Well, it is. And it shouldn't be, but Unfortunately, we're going to have to live with that for today, but the six people that have done that, I think should, in the best interest of the city, which they weren't thinking about at the time, as we see it or I see it, need to just say it's time for us to pack up and go because according to this quote in the paper the other day, what we've done is in the best interest of the library as we see it. That's Library Board President Bernie Markovich. Well, the library is fine, but the taxpayers of Sheboygan need to be answered to as well, and they're not answering to the taxpayers of Sheboygan. And if the library doesn't have the money to pay her out, for example, if she is dismissed with just cause, the city of Sheboygan would be on the hook for the, uh, for the remainder of that money. And that could be up to, at this point, a half a million bucks that we can't uh, afford, not saying that it would happen. But they put us in a pretty good position here. So I would, again, move that this be put upon its passage and ask that those people simply say, uh, Mr. Mayor, we'd like to resign, and that's what I'm looking for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to um, put an amendment to this resolution, and I would like to ask for the resignation of all 10 board members. I feel that um, we need to start fresh with this library board so we have uh, 
ears and eyes that will be asking questions and that, that the library will be held accountable for the monies that they are getting from the city and to the taxpayers and to the council. So I'm asking that ten, all 10 members, uh, I'm asking for their resignation. You're making a motion to amend? Yes, I am. Thank Is you. Is there a second? I'll second that, Your Honor. There's a second to that motion. Discussion on the amendment only. Alderman DeBerg. All right, on that amendment, uh, this, this problem here hasn't, didn't arise overnight. This has been going on for 10, 15 years. The Common Council dishes out X amount of dollars to the library board every year, and that's the end of it. We have no control, no, no say over where that money goes. I think for too many years, the council has been lax in that uh, position. It's about time this county or this council takes the bull by the horns, and wherever we put money out, we got to have control over it. We got to have say over it. Our job is to watch the uh, taxpayer dollars. That's what we were hired for. And we got to watch it. No matter who we give it to, we should have some control over it, not just give it out and say, no, there you are. Do what you want. With it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Berg. Something wrong with the system the way it is right now. But I would ask uh, Attorney McLean. Now, this is just basically symbolic. They don't have to resign, correct? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, hold on, Vanderbilt. The uh, resolution calls for asking for resignations. Uh, I, I don't know that it's just symbolic. It's more than symbolic. You're asking the library board members to resign, uh, but they would not be forced <coughs> to, to resign. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On the amendment, um, I don't believe that we should be penalizing the whole library board for six people's mistakes. Four of the members did understand what they were doing, and I think they did a good job, and they should not have to resign. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I do understand the level of frustration that Alderperson Sigali is expressing with this desire. Um, however, I think that we're crossing the line on this one if we um, ask for everybody's, because I think there needs to be a reason why we would ask for a resignation from um, the public or from an appointee that we put on a committee. If we start asking for all 10 of their resignations, then what's going to prevent us from asking for a resignation from everybody on the Health Room Water Committee because we don't like their discussions that are going on? Or where do you draw the line? How do you stop? I think there needs to be cause. There needs to be a reason to ask for a resignation. And with the, um, the six people that voted in favor of this contract, by committing the taxpayers to possibly fork out almost $500,000 within 30 days if they decide to terminate her, her, the director's employment, I think that's a pretty strong reason why we have cause to ask for the resignation of these six people. Um, I can't support uh, asking for the resignation from the other four because I just I think we're crossing the line and then we're going to, at the next meeting, someone will bring in a resolution to uh, remove a lot of other people from other committees and, and then the ball's going to start rolling and it'll, it will never stop. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman D. Burton. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Is there a reason why there's 10 on this board? Yes. There's so, ma there's so many that the city uh, is responsible okay, for appointing, for and then the county appoints one, and the school, the school district appoints one. Okay. It's not that uh, we want to punish those, the four. I'm thinking that if, if we want to start out fresh, if, why don't they all just resign, and then you collect, say, 20 applications for the county or the library board. And then you pick out 10 that you think are going to be satisfactory and bring it back to either the uh, committee to whole or bring it to the full uh, council here. OK. Thank you. Alderman Eber. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. There's an old nostrum that says, be careful what you ask for because you might get it. 
Uh, in this case, I don't think that particular is going to apply. But the concern I would have when you ask for everybody to resign, uh, need to appreciate that the library needs to continue to run. With the $200,000 cutback, they are really losing many of their senior tier of management. So you're going to find, number one, a, certainly a structural reorganization that will take place as a result of this. So again, were you to ask for this and get it, uh, whoever the director is would be, would be struck with not only the challenge of delivering library services, restructuring the organization, but dealing with two, 10 board members, none of which likely have had prior experience. So I really can't, can't, I really can't support the amendment on that basis. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Mm -hmm. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Alderman Berg, I guess that's what her $94,000 requires her to do. Um, but I'm getting at is I think we need to start a new on, on, on the board. We need to have the fresh eyes and fresh ears in here and people to ask questions. Now, like Alderman Berg said, you would be appointing. A lot of these people that uh, would be appointed or want to be on this board are knowledgeable of the board. But we need to have a, a, a total fresh scene here. We, we just need to have, uh, I'm not saying that the four board members have um, done bad, that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that if we're going to do the six, then we should be doing the whole ten and start fresh. Thank you. Alderman Croft. Thank you, Your Honor. I have to agree with my colleagues, Alderman Segali and Alderman Berg, uh, on asking for all ten. Um, I do believe that um, we need to start fresh. We need to, to look and see um, and instill in the people that we place on the library board that they are looking out not only for the best interests of the library, but they're also getting funding, a majority of their funding from the city, and they have to look out for the best, um, whatever we can, they can best do for the city also. Therefore, I will support this amendment. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Alderman Sheva. Thank you, Your Honor. First, I'd like to, to commend um, my fellow older persons because I think this discussion is good, and I understand the spirit of which this resolution was put together. And I, that's, I think, a spirit of concern, but I think we're missing the bullseye here. I also had looked at this um, issue on several, um, several angles, and one being the resignations, starting with the six, leading on to the ten. What prevents us from being at the same issue again over a different issue that they might make? Nothing does. But what I keep hearing is there are some concerns about not having a level of accountability to that board from the council. Um, typically, when I think about asking for a resignation, it's usually a courtesy that's extended to an individual or individuals that if given a due process that they might be found guilty, and this somewhat saves them that embarrassment. Um, if the council feels so strongly that they were out of boundaries, unethical, I think we need to provide them that due process by holding a quasi-judicial hearing. But again, that could be setting a dangerous precedence. This is a democracy. Just because we don't see eye to eye on one issue, I guess I don't want to be setting that precedence. Which leads me further. Um, looking to the contract. And I think there's some um, older persons here that have very strong concerns about what this contract states, um, how it compares to other non-reps who are just appointed. Um, and I had also spoke with Steve McLean today who actually gave me some insight. And I think there's been a great proposal that was given today under other matters, and that's going to be document 1940, which is going to ask the library board to revisit this issue by opening up the contract and looking at it once again. Um, I think this, I know it's been said that they need to come to their senses. I think this gives them the benefit of the doubt to take another look at it. I think that's the better route to take. Um, and lastly, I guess worst case scenario is that let's say there's nothing, our hands are tied as far as there's nothing we can do to prevent this contract from changing it, amending it. Maybe next year when it comes to budget time, we could reduce the budget for what we give the library by the increase of what they've given and in, in stated in this contract. But I do have questions, um, one for HR Director Ed um, Surik and then also two for Steve McLean. Okay, Mr. Surik, would, like would you come up first? Thanks, Ed. 
Um, I was wondering if you could sp expound a little bit. I understand that typically non-rep employees have to sign, is it an employee at will clause? And if this contract supersede, supersedes that? Well, non-rep employees or oral employees, there, there's no contract that non-rep employees sign. We're, um, Wisconsin is an employment at will state, meaning that uh, the employer and employee can leave employment or be employed any time for any reason, basically, as long as it's not discriminatory, you know, age, sex, whatever. Okay. And as far as non-reps go, we don't, we are, uh, we are hired as any other employee. Uh, department heads are uh, interviewed by Civil Service Commission, and the recommendation is made to the mayor, and the mayor makes an appointment. The appointment is either approved or not approved by the council for a five-year term, initially. And then at the conclusion of the five years of employment, uh, the mayor will decide whether he'd like to bring before the council uh, approval to reappoint that employee for a five-year period. But there basically is no guarantee because if the council, uh, for whatever reason, decides to terminate the, the appointment by three-quarter vote or they actually can go to majority vote if, if they so desire, they can do so. Okay, thank you, so, Ed. Thank you, sir. Attorney McLean. Um, thank you, Attorney mm -hmm. McLean. Um, my questions to you is I had spoken to you concerning the budget. If indeed the last case scenario, we would reduce the budget for the library next year due to this increase, if indeed, and how that's going to affect the maintenance effort, if you could share that with the public. And lastly, which I think is most important, which we need to explore, and again, document 1940 will do that, is how, um, if you need any discretion from this council to move forward in proceeding to find out if indeed this contract is legal, um, to provide this council with some information regarding that. Those are my questions. Thank, thank you. Attorney McLean. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Sir, I guess to back up first, to add to uh, what Mr. Surik was indicating, a uh, number of the department heads have five-year terms, those are set by ordinance. Uh, it does, that, those ordinance sections talk about termination for cause with three-quarters vote. It doesn't talk about termination without cause. So uh, termination without cause, I think, would be an open question. Uh, if you were, say, to terminate a department head who was terminable with cause, uh, without cause, uh, what would be their recourse? And I would submit that it, it's an open question, but that a case could be made that that employee could bring a claim against the city for the balance of compensation for that term uh, if they were not terminated with cause as is set forth in the ordinance. Uh, now that, that being said, getting back to your, your first question has to do with the uh, maintenance of efforts provisions. Uh, Mead Public Library, uh, as is the case with, I believe, all libraries in the state, uh, Local libraries are are uh, members in uh, different uh, library systems throughout the state. We're in the federated library system uh, with Ozaukee County and Sheboygan County that includes, uh, I believe, all the libraries in Ozaukee and Sheboygan counties. And we, uh, a resident of the city of Sheboygan, can check out books out of uh, Mequon and. Uh, uh, other libraries in Ozaki County just as as you can in the Mead Public Library and, and vice versa. Uh, the, the statutes talk about this maintenance of efforts that in order to uh, avoid being removed from the federated library system, uh, the council needs to appropriate each year an amount that's equal at least to the average of the uh, past three years. Uh, and I think that's the level we're at this year. We're at the maintenance of efforts level. So if you were to decrease the appropriation next year, uh, the city could run the risk of being terminated from the federated library system. Uh, with respect to the, uh, the contract and, and reviewing the legality of that, uh, I did speak with the, both attorneys at the League of Wisconsin Municipalities today, and uh, they'd be willing, if, uh, if the council wants me to pursue a, a legal opinion, uh, they'd be willing to provide one, I think, to the city. Generally, they, uh, they look for 
requests from the city attorneys generally as opposed to individual aldermen for uh, formal written opinions. Um, but I, I would do that if the council is so inclined. I, you know, I have looked at the issue. I guess I've got my feelings that uh, I, I spent most of today on this issue, in fact, and, um, on the, uh, the legality of the contract. Uh, I think, you know, a, a uh, sort of a bootstrap view is I think similar to the fact that the council can provide uh, five-year appointments or five-year terms for department heads. I think uh, a library board probably can enter into a uh, multiple-year agreement. Um, one area of concern I do have is uh, the, uh, the statutes do give the library board exclusive control of the expenditures of the money that's appropriated to the library. Uh, and that includes hiring and the compensation for the director. Uh, but at least in theory under the, under the contract as it's uh, uh, entered into, there is provision for termination without cause that, off, that allows an option for the library director to uh, request a lump sum payment of the balance of the, the term, the salary and benefits. You know, in theory, uh, before the theory, that under that contract it requires a unanimous vote of the library board, which I think as a practical matter would be very, very difficult to obtain. But be that as it may, in theory, uh, if that was obtained, uh, that and if it came early in the five-year term, would be a sizable number. And I'm not sure that, and I haven't looked at the numbers, but not sure that the library board would have that amount of money appropriated uh, in, say, 2006, that uh, they'd be in a position to expend in that manner that's not earmarked for other salaries and benefits and other expenditures. Uh, so that, that's one area of the contract that uh, raises some concern in my view. There is a severability provision in the contract, which means that if a judge were to look at it and find uh, a portion of it uh, invalid for whatever reason, that those provisions could be uh, severed from the contract so the balance of the contract could remain in, intact. So I don't think that that would uh, really get you where you know the concerns are that, that would solve a lot of uh, the issues that the Council seems to have over the contract, but um, you know, if if the council would like, I'd be happy to uh, write a letter to the league and ask them to look into it and um, have them assist our office in providing some opinion to you. We don't, we don't have it on the agenda. We'll, we'll do this in a very democratic way. Everybody at once, Attorney McLean, to request an opinion, nod your head. Yeah. <laughs> Please request one. Okay. Alderman Montemayor, you're next. Um, and thank you, Your Honor. Um, to support this resolution, well, it wasn't difficult for me to come to the conclusion that I will support this resolution. Being on the Finance Committee, I don't want to handcuff anybody, any of us, when it comes to money. Now, it, even though it wasn't a difficult conclusion to come to that I will support this, it was painful. These are some of my personal friends. I support the library. The library is what helps, it, helps us stay civilized. However, I think we should vote yes on your resolution, Alderman Susha, Alderman Meyer, Alderman Radke. And to vote yes on that does not preclude the library board from going ahead and revisiting the contract. So I don't think voting yes on this resolution will anyway um, dismiss the next agenda item. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, are we still just speaking on the amendment? Just the amendment, yes. Okay. One I more will, time. We'll wait. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any more? 
Okay, please read the amendment. We'll take a roll call. Okay, the amendment is to ask for the ask change it to ask for the resignation of all ten library board trustees. That's what we're voting on. So an I would be to do it to ten people. Okay, Radke, Sagali, Aye. Stefan, no, Susha, no, Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, no, D Berg. Eberg, no. Serta, no. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, no. Manny, no. Meyer, no. and Montemayor. No. Five ayes, ten noes. Amendment fails. Now we will take a vote on the original uh, motion to pass the resolution. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. A couple of quick points I failed to talk about just a little bit ago. There was another possibility before this contract was uh, signed by the library director. The possibility I found out this afternoon was the fact that the bylaws of the library could have been changed. And after talking to a library board member and finding out that the timing from Friday until I think it was Thursday or something like that, there was not a lot of discussion. It was pretty much kept hush-hush. There was not a lot of options available. So that was one of the possibilities that could have been done in order to avoid uh, doing this contract. And that bylaw could have given them the option of doing the type of five-year type of appointment like we do here with the various different department heads. The other thing I was wanting to read here, and this is because we are public officials and we are answerable to the taxpayers, and I would hope that this would apply to the library and others as well in Section 267 of the Municipal Code. It says responsibility of public officials and employees. Public officials and employees are agents of public purpose and hold office for the benefit of the public. They are bound to uphold the Constitution of the United States uh, and the Constitution of the state and carry out impartially the laws of the nation, state, and city, and thus to foster respect of all government. They are bound to observe in their official acts the highest standards of morality and discharge faithfully the duties of their office, regardless of personal considerations, recognizing that public interest must be their primary concern. Their conduct in both their official and private affairs should be above reproach so as to foster respect for all government. And that's the point here I'm trying to make, especially to them, is uh, the fact that the public interest must be all of our primary concerns regardless if you're on a board that does not answer directly to the taxpaying public or those of us that are elected and do answer to the taxpaying public, we all have an obligation. By no means is this resolution anything to start chopping apart the Mead Public Library because the library in and of itself is a jewel that this city can never afford to lose. And I'm a very staunch supporter of the library. But to see this type of activity happen at the Mead Public Library and see ourselves being tied to these types of um, contracts by the library board and having no recourse other than to possibly ask for resignation. I mean, I, I guess we could look into recall hearings for cause and things like that. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do that. That's why I brought the resolution in to just say, okay, folks, let's do it this way. We'll keep it clean. Um, we can look at the other ways too, but I'm going to wait until we hear from what the municipalities has to say. Thank you. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, you know, actually, I see my good friend, uh, School Board President Mark Hanna in the audience, and I, I think him and Superintendent Joe Sheehan should be congratulated that they found a candidate who wants to get on the library board, because given these circumstances, I can't imagine anybody's knocking on people's doors to get on. I think these people meant well, and I truly believe, you know, Jeff talked about, or Alderman Rackey talked about, you know, the public best interest. I think, I know some of these people, you know, they're all people known in the community. I really, truly believe they all, you know, maybe they didn't understand the ramifications of it. Maybe they didn't know that nobody else, you know, had a contract. They had five-year appointments. What was the difference? Clearly, mistakes were made here. And I'm just not sure that I'm willing to say, okay, you made a mistake. Now we want your resignation. I've made mistakes talking. I've made mistakes voting. I've made mistakes at committee of the whole. I've made mistakes on committees. Nobody's ever said... We want to bring in a resolution to, to take you away. You want, we want you to resign. I'm not a fan of the recall procedure. We all stand for election every two years, the mayors every four years. You know, if people don't like us, you know, that's the time to take care of us. I don't see anything so egregious here 
I truly believe these people meant well. We've heard, you know, I've heard from many people, and the biggest thing I hear about is the $94,000. You know, yeah, that's what she makes, you know. I mean, if she stays five years, it's kind of a moot point. I expect her to stay five years. I don't think anybody's questioning her ability. She's, with all the contracts, she's going to stay five years. She's still going to get $94,000. I, mean, I think that's the thing that people grab onto, and, and a couple other persons mentioned the laws. Now, I don't want to be accused of spreading misinformation, but I think I was reading on the internet yesterday some press releases, and I believe our Senator Lightham actually has legislation that he's working on to change the state library laws. So you might want to give him a call tomorrow and say, can we get this in there? I don't think it's got anything to do with this. But they are looking at changing the way the, the state structures what we can and can't do as far as library laws, and certainly, if you're not happy about our limited power in this case, that might be the avenue we should take long term, I guess. I guess, like, like I said, I can't support at this time. I think uh, Ms. Hundley mentioned the League of Municipalities. We've agreed to do that. There's a motion that we can pass tonight, document 1940, asking them to reconsider it themselves. I think if those things don't happen, then I'd be willing to ask for the resignations, but I'm just not to that point yet. So with Without further ado, I'd like to make a motion to refer this to salary and grievances. Second. I'm sorry, who seconded it? Motion okay. and a second to refer a salary and grievance under discussion on the referral. Alderman, okay, I, I had Alderman Manny, you, you were next. Do you want to speak on the, on the motion to refer? Is that debatable? I don't think so. Do you want to speak, sir? I would like to as opposed to referring. Pardon me? I would like to as opposed to referring the document at this point. Okay. Do you want to speak? Yes, Alderman Manning. First of all, a question uh, for, for uh, City Attorney McLean. I know the answer, but I would like him to say it because I think it has more force than what I would say it. Why do state statutes establish library boards as independent agencies? Then I'll have comments after the answer. Thanks, Alderman Manning. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I, I don't know that I can tell you, you know, really what was in the legislature's mind when they uh, created library boards to be independent, but, uh, you know, I can surmise that part of it was to try to take the politics out of running libraries. Uh, similar, but only, only partially similar to uh, boards of police and fire commissioners where uh, that, those bodies appoint the chiefs of the police and fire department. Um, here, library boards have more authority over the budgeted funds, um, but I think the basic gist of it is to, uh, to have appointed citizens, uh, like the other citizens of the community, uh, appointed to the board to, uh, to try to remove, uh, have operation of the library uh, removed one step from the political process. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Oh, Armand Manny, you want to? That's okay. Pardon me? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I think Attorney McLean's comments distinctly uh, speak to this situation because what we're doing is making political decisions at this point in time about a decision that, that uh, a body has made with which we do not agree. I sit on the board. I voted against the contract. I do not believe it is in the best interest of the city or the library. However, there's a context for every decision made. Realize that this council's actions this year and over the last many years are a part of that context that made the request for a contract um, come from the director. Uh, there have been minuscule increases, much below the inflation rate, for the library for many years. At the same time, they've balanced their budget by cutting expenses. We laud them for that. Uh, about 28% over the last 10 years. That's a job well done. Uh, in addition, uh, we cut their budget for 2006 by our actions at the end of the budgetary process, almost as a surprise, by $110,000. So they didn't get the expected 1.5% increase. Uh, so they lost basically $194,000 over their initial budget uh, revenue projections related to budget and expenses. 
whether it's true or not, their perception has been on occasion that the council is anti-library. Whether true or not, perception in the political context is perhaps a part of reality. Their decisions about the contract request were made in that context. In addition, there has been a vocal and antagonistic minority uh, pushing the library about issues. Certainly there might be a degree of substance to those, those allegations or concerns, perhaps though uh, a degree of, of substance is not in any sense an overriding reality. Um, that's the context for such a decision to grant a contract uh, that was made. Um, in addition, recognize the pressure of time frame. A budget finalized in November gives them one month to decide what they will do with $110,000 of actual cuts and $194,000 of, of, of less of actual dollars. Quickly then, the board began to put together with the direction and leadership of Sharon and others, a program of library uh, voluntary retirement, secondarily voluntary <coughs> work reduction. With the responses of those in positions of major, major leadership, the board was very concerned about continuity. If three or four department heads retire, what will happen if the director also chooses to retire, as she could have? She was asking for something in what she perceived as a political environment that was charged that would give her a five-year term that would parallel department heads, terms of, of employment. That I fully support. That is parity. Nothing more would I support. That's the context, and that's part of the reason um, for that contract being granted. I disagree with it. Most people here disagree with it, obviously. But it was a part of a political process that this council also impacted. And you're purposely ignoring that part of the whole reality. I think that part is a disservice to the library board. So I think they're being shot at, in some sense, unfairly and unduly. I oppose the resolution distinctly. I think it's wrong. I think we need to, even if we dis disagree 100%, that their actions uh, are, are their legal right, and this resolution just does not help the environment nor the future of the library. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Matty. We do have a motion to refer to committee. There was a second. It is debatable. Um, it requires a majority vote to send it back, and that's where we're at now. Alderman Susha, did you want to speak? Referral? Thank you. I would ask that the alderman uh, vote no for the referral for the simple reason that this document is, is rather watered down. Um, what we're asking for is the immediate resignation, optional resignation, of the six board members that voted in favor of this contract. Um, I, I don't think we need to send it to a committee and then two weeks later have the same document come back to the council floor and then we're going to finish the discussion that we're in the middle of right now. I think it makes more sense to just finish the discussion now because this is just an optional resignation. This document would have a totally different meaning if it was asking for the immediate termination. I mean, we do have that power. We could eliminate six board members tonight with one amendment and a vote. But I don't think that would be very germane to change the word resignation to termination. Um, so I would just ask that we finish the discussion tonight rather than send it to salary and grievance because I think we would rehash a lot of things that we've already said tonight two weeks from now when the issue would come back to us. So I would ask that you vote no on this referral. Alderman Meyer on the referral. No. Alderman Kittleson on the referral. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meir. I, this just is not very easy at all for me as I'm listening to everything, too. I think there are two sides to every story. We've heard one side really loud and clear, but from the board members that voted for the contract, I, I, I don't know what their side of the story is, and, and that's their privilege, I guess. They did what they did. I just feel um, our, our city attorney did advise them to vote against the to vote against the five-year contract and so I'm weighing those issues in my mind too I did like what Alderman Stefan had to say is that we refer it to salary and grievance I listened to what Alderman Susha has to say now and she'd like to finish the the discussion here so 
I, and I guess where I'd like to also know where does resolution 1940 fit into the picture that Alderman Berg here has, has brought in. I, I, um, I'm just unsure at this time. Um, I don't know where this leaves us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Galli on the motion to refer. Yes, it, it does have to do with the voting, though, um, with my amendment, etc. cetera. Um, Alderman Manny is sitting on the, on the library board. Is he to be abstaining during these votes since he's part of the board that we're speaking of? Attorney McLean. Uh, I guess I thought of that after the, the vote uh, to remove or to ask for the resignation of all ten. Thank you. Probably would have been best if Alderman Manny had abstained from that vote, but uh, it's obvious it would not have made any difference on the bottom line. Uh, I don't think Alderman Manny needs to abstain from uh, asking for the resignation of other library board members. Uh, you know, if, it, if it's his position that's at stake, I, I can see that being a, a conflict, but not for others. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Stefan, on your motion to refer. Yeah. I just wanted to say, my intention was not to send it to settlement agreements to come back in two weeks and have the same conversation. I think that buys us time to get a legal opinion from legal municipalities. I think it also gives the library board an opportunity to meet. You know, it's kind of, you know, I tell my kids they did something wrong, but you don't give them a chance to fix it. It's not very good parenting. I think we, they know that, you know, we don't agree with them. Now let's see if they can justify it or if they say, yeah, you know, maybe we didn't realize all the ramifications. I think we get, by sending it to a committee and getting it back, we also buy that time. You know, other options rather than taking this one. Alderman Thank you, Your Honor. In addition to having the library meet, what I'm thinking about most importantly, like um, Alderman Kittleson said, it gives them an opportunity. I can't imagine having this issue discussed and not having my say on it. And the library board, for those individuals that were considering asking them to resign, this is an opportunity for them to come to us directly at salary and grievance. And maybe they would like to have a say or they've reconsidered some things, and that gives them an opportunity. Thank you. Alderman Susha, second time on the referral. Thank you. I think that we're all kind of going down the same path with what we would like to do. Basically, all this is asking for is an optional resignation from some of the board members. And there's nothing that we can do in the next two weeks. There's no action we could take as a board between now and then. They have the opportunity to either resign or um, if they think that there is a problem here, they should call a meeting and try to fix the problem if they realize that there was a mistake made. Um, so again, I think that we should just ask for their optional resignation at this point, and then in two weeks, like you talked about document, I believe it was 1940, will be coming in, and I think they work hand in hand, because if the library board feels they made a mistake, they will probably meet before we even start discussing the next document and fix the problem. However, if they stand by their decision, um, and they're going to stick to it saying, we made the right choice, we're not going to change our minds, then we don't need to ask for their resignation because then two to four weeks from now, a resolution could be drafted uh, asking for their immediate termination. Um, so I think we're all moving in the same direction. Just asking for an optional resiga resignation this night, I think resignation tonight just sends the message saying that um, we realize that you made a mistake. Some of the people on that board are very good people. It was simply a mistake. But hey, you hit our radar, and all we're doing is we're kind of giving you a little bit of a warning here, and now we're putting the ball back in your court to fix the problem. Um, I think just by letting it slide, that's not the right message that we need to send either. And this isn't really very strict. We're just asking for an optional resignation, and I think we should move ahead tonight and see where we go from there. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Rackey. Thank you, Your Honor. I think it's only fair to note that the library board None of this came out, really, until after we had adjourned for the year. And this all came about over the holidays when there was nobody around to even consult. I mean, the city attorney was on vacation. We didn't have to call him in. All of them were nowhere to be found uh, because they were on vacation. It was the holidays. And we were on short weeks and things. And this all came up over the holidays. And I think some of that was a timing on their part as well. So that's another reason why I think we need to deal with this tonight. I mean. The chance was there. They could have let this out beforehand before we met the last time, but that didn't come out either. Okay. Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Alderman Shusha keeps on saying optional resignation. The documents 
clearly states that they're, you're asking for their immediate resignation. So I think we should uh, send it to uh, salaries and grievance and uh, work on 1940 coming up. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree, of course, with Alderman Shusha on this issue. Um, we are just sending a message. We really don't expect these board members to resign. We are just trying to understand where they're coming from, um, because I certainly don't. And um, the message I think we need to give is that we are upset with this decision. They're supposed to be working for the people, and this is definitely not what happened. And I think we could get this issue solved tonight and then move on to the next document next time. Thank you. Second time, Alderman Recky on the uh Amen, uh, referral. Th thank you, Your Honor. In all due respect to Alderman Stephan, I would like to make an amendment to his referral. Instead of sending it to the Salary and Grievances Committee, I would recommend sending it to the Committee of the Whole so we can all sit down here and call them all in here to this chamber right on the television for everybody to see exactly what's going on, and then the answers can be free-flowing for each and every one of us in this room. Is there a second? Is there a second? Motion second. dies for lack of a oh. second. Do we have a second? Pardon me? It, it, it's, it's, well, amend, it's amendable. It is amendable. It's amendable. The referral is but amendable. But there was no second. Is there a second? <laughs> There's a motion and a second to refer to the committee of the whole instead. That will take precedence. That is debatable. That requires a majority vote. Is anybody, does anybody want to say something? Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me let me let me hook you on. Okay, I'll remember. A point of order. I don't have my Roberts rules of order, but if I recall, when an amendment substantially changes the intent of the original amendment, uh, then uh, that has to, then uh, that isn't a valid amendment. It's a hostile is, amendment in it's this case. It's a hostile case. amendment. Is, is that, and if that's the case, uh, would, would this be considered a hostile amendment? It does not change. The, it, all it does is refer to another committee with all the alderman present. So I don't see it would change the substance of, of, the, okay, uh, thank you. of that the amendment you. itself. That's why I allowed it. But it, it does refer to as a hostile amendment because mm -hmm. it's contrary to the original intent of the first mm -hmm. one. So we're back. Does anybody want to discuss the, um, the referral to committee of the whole? Oh, excuse me, Alderman Manny. Alderman Kittleson, did you want to say something on that? I was just going to support that we send it to salary and grievance, and then we get the opportunity to attend that meeting. The library board gets to be there, and we can discuss it there at that committee. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel on the amendment to the committee of the whole. Sir? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if anybody listened to the radio or read the paper, they all know that we're going to discuss this tonight. So I would ask is if there is any other members besides Susan Humley of the board here tonight. Because they could have come and spoken to us tonight if we would have asked. That's a good point. Thank you. Okay, we have Alderman Maddie, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Dialogue's a good thing. Opportunity for conversation with other board members present, I think that would be advantageous. I see nothing to be lost in that. So wherever, wherever place it goes, I would like referral. Okay, we will call the roll on the motion. Re this would be on the motion to refer to, or it's an amendment to send to a committee of the whole instead of salary and grievances. So an I vote would be to send it to the committee of the whole. Uh, let's see here. Sigali. Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? No. Serta? Aye. Graf? No. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. Seven ayes and eight noes. Motion fails. We'll take a vote on the other amendment to refer to salary and grievance. Mm -hmm. Stefan? 
Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? No. Serta? Aye. Graf? No. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. And Sigali? No. Seven ayes, eight noes. Motion fails. Go back to the original motion. Okay, hold on. <laughs> The uh, original motion, I believe, was a... Uh, the original motion was to pass... I'm sorry, <coughs> we're, we still have on the floor the, the, the amendment to ask for the resignation of all 10. No, that failed. Oh, we failed. That failed. Back to the original motion to pass the resolution to ask mm -hmm. for the six. immediate we're back. six. Right, we're back. Back to the original. Alderman Eberg, you look like you're... <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thank you, and I, it's symbolic of the vacillation I think many of us have feel tonight to pull the trigger or, or not pull the trigger. And I think uh, in, in that regard, what we're having is a symbolic discussion about that that's reflective of the feelings and frustrations with uh, one unique decision that was made uh, and one vote. And I, I uh, a part of me that looks at my life in some ways. I'm hired to be a professional voter. Uh, this week, with the committee meetings, I'll probably cast something like 60 or 70 votes. So there's a part of me that personally is reluctant to ask for someone to resign based upon only their decision on one vote. So I think for me, the question is, does this vote really meet that threshold for me to, uh, re to request that someone really quit their job as a result of what they've done on one vote. Uh, conversation is a two-way street. We expect the library board members to come and talk to us. How many here have thought about contacting the library board members? Uh, I can't say I've talked to all of them, but I've talked to about four or five of them. And as you might guess, they seem to be about as mixed as perhaps we are in terms of their steadfastness regarding uh, matters such as this. So um, one of the as a result of that, I guess, I came back from town, out of town, and I heard that there was this resolution to call for the resignations. And I thought, well, that seems to be kind of strident. And then I got older than Radke's uh, resolution, and I started reading it and saying, hmm, I can agree with all of your whereases. You know, everything you say under the whereases seem to be what we're talking about, and there seems to be a general consensus that we've reached regarding those issues. So I think while we agree on the problem, I don't know that we have clarity of agreement on how that problem is resolved or the solution. That's what brought me to uh, spend some time talking with some of the library uh, trustees. Also had the occasion uh, uh, with Mayor Perez to meet with the library director, uh, Ms. Winkle, to, uh, to, I guess, ascertain her read on the situation and perhaps her willingness to uh, revisit uh, some of the issues that were brought up in uh, the agreement that was signed. Uh, yeah. And I guess out of that, what I came to, even though we agree on the problem, we have somewhat different solutions. Uh, I don't think I can support uh, asking for resignations because I think that just increases the divisiveness. But from listening to the discussion, uh, document, is it uh, 1040? 19. Uh, 1940 cannot be acted upon tonight because uh, by the time we finished our meeting on Thursday, it was too late to get anything in. Uh, therefore, in my long-winded way, what I want to do is make an amendment to this resolution. Yet another. Uh, goes like this. Uh, the whereases will remain the same. And on the back, if you can look at 1940, and say, now be it resolved that by this action, the Common Council of the City Sheboygan respectfully requests that the Mead Library Board of Trustees act to reopen contract negotiations with the library director to modify said contract and mirror the terms of employment that apply to other appointed city department heads. So what this does is essentially uh, uh, strike uh, that language that speaks to asking for the immediate resignation, and that includes the body, in other words, uh, uh, to strike 
on the top, a resolution asking for the immediate resignation of Mead Public Library board members, and then to substitute under the be it resolved uh, that part that deals with uh, a request that they go back and give consideration to reopening contracts. Second. <laughs> Point of order. Your yes, that, that, that's a hostile yeah. amendment. It changes the substance. <laughs> that's what you were against earlier. We can't allow that. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Burke. Alderman Graf. That's, I, that was it. Alderman Seva. That was it. That was it. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Thanks for making me write Alderman, all that. Thank you Alderman very much. Susha. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple of things. I think that this is a rather somewhat ugly part of the job of an alder person is having to make a decision to either fire somebody or to reprimand anybody in any way because some of these people that are listed here are very good people. They just made a major mistake that I don't think we can overlook. We just need to let them know that we, we noticed what happened and they expect them to take some responsibility and change what they did. Um, a couple of things. I know earlier this evening we had talked about having Attorney McLean get an opinion from the League of Municipalities, and I would suspect that if we do that, the library board will probably turn to the Department of Public Instruction and get, have their attorneys draft an opposing view, possibly, even though I know that some of the talks going on with the Department of Public Instruction, even they are shocked that the library board in Sheboygan actually gave this type of a contract to the director. Um, but there is a possibility that they would present an opposing viewpoint, so we'd have two you know, major entities with opposing viewpoints. So earlier today, I had requested from the mayor to take this issue straight to the attorney general's office, and get a written opinion from her on where this issue stands, because I know that attorney McLean appears to believe that the library board can set compensation levels um, for them, um, whereas I guess the opposing view could be that uh, you have to look at the spirit in which that law was written. And I don't think the spirit in the law says, okay, you can pay this person you know, a $500,000 payout. Um, but anyway, I just think it would be better to get it straight from the top person because then nobody would, I don't think you can refute what the Attorney General has to say. So I will hope that we follow up with that avenue in regards to what we can and cannot allow them to do. But in regards to um, a mistake, this will give them the opportunity to go ahead and make the changes necessary. So hopefully they'll be scheduling a library board meeting real soon this will be on the agenda, and um, perhaps we won't even have to address 1940 because they'll solve the problem before we meet again. Thank you. We have second time, I believe, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I received many, many phone calls on this issue, and um, the 94000 is a huge amount of money that people do not understand. And um, seeing that 70% of our, their library budget comes from the city, the board is responsible to the taxpayers also like we are. And I do believe that the majority of these board members are very good people, they meant well, and they just took the wrong lawyer's advice. The city attorney did explain to them that this was not the right thing to do to sign this contract, and they chose the other attorney's advice. And um, I don't want this to be, this is not a personal vendetta against any one of these people. They are good people. And I guess I basically this is sending a message. Um, we cannot allow these things to go on in our city. We are in tight budget times right now. And I'm just wondering what happens in the next couple of years if it turns out that this contract with Ms. Winkle is legal. What happens if we do have to cut the library budget. Who is going to go? It should start at the top, the budget cuts. But in this case, it's not going to start at the top at all. It'll probably start way at the bottom where the person really needs this job. So I do support this resolution. I, I really doubt that many of these people will resign. And I do think this is just sending a very stern <coughs> message. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Serra. Thank you, Your Honor. Plain and simple, I think the jury's still out on this. Now we have not only the League of Municipalities that we're going to wait to hear from, but also the Attorney General. And what would happen if those two entities had come back and found out that this board had acted in their jurisdiction, but yet we asked for their resignations, and they did take that? We would feel bad, I would believe, as a council. I think more information with this concerning this issue is not going to hurt us. I think a little bit time to get back some of that, those answers is only going to help us in the long run. Thank you. 
and before we call roll, I just want to make a few comments here. The, the resolution that Alderman Burr proposes to bring in can run parallel to this one, too. Um, it, it's become a real hot issue in the community, the library decision. Bernie Mr. Markovich is a good friend of mine. There are people there that I, that I respect, highly respect. I think, I think that uh, people are not necessarily questioning where they had the authority to do it. There's a lot of things that we have authority over, and there's a lot of things that we can legally do, but does that make it right? And I think that's what the issue has been. And if, if you're listening to what people are saying out there in the community, they're saying, I know you have the right to do it. I know it's legal. You shouldn't have done it. That's what they're telling us. And I hear it over and over and over again. And that is precisely the same thing that creates distrust in a, in a government, in a board, in a committee or commission. Because then it brings up that arrogance that says, I don't care if you don't like it. I have the authority. I'm going to do it because I just simply want to do it. That's the whole issue. People are saying, yes, it's legal. Yes, it's right. I mean, yes, it's, you have the jurisdiction, <coughs> but that doesn't make it right. And I think what people are telling us is pretty strong. And I think the message here, from what I'm listening here, Alderman Berg's uh, uh, resolution could run parallel to this request. They will see. The council is serious. They will see, ooh, we made a real huge mistake here, not only contrary to, to public opinion, but contrary to political opinion, too. They may just say, you know what? Instead of resigning, we're going to go back and bring it forth to the table again. It both can happen at the same time, but without a message, without a strong voice from this council saying, you should not have done that, it goes unheard. My position. Please call the roll. Okay, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is on the original resolution asking for the immediate resignations, and I vote would be to pass that resolution. Alderman Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. No. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. No. Serta. No. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. No. Meyer. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. and Stefan. No. Ten ayes, five noes. Motion carries. <clears throat> 1927 will be referred to finance. 1928 will be referred to finance. 1929 will be referred to public protection and safety. 1930. A uh, report of committee by law and licensing recommending granting various licenses. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> behalf of law and licensing, I move to accept and adopt the report of the committee. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. and Sagali. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1931, an ordinance by Alderman Berg reestablishing the salary for the positions of all the persons of the city of Sheboygan. Alderman E. Berg. Uh, I believe this is the first reading of this, so shouldn't it lie over, or is there some need that we have to pass it so that the you want to check? get paid? <laughs> There's no rush. Uh, you know, I mean, typically we do allow ordinance to lie over. Is that, is that, that's our procedure. The next meeting, that wouldn't impact it wouldn't anything. impact anything. Uh, it wouldn't you, what you want to lie over? I'd like to have it lie over. Just for 1931, we'll lie over. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Other matters? That will be referred to law and licensing. I'm sorry, Attorney McLean, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, 1933 is a communication from John Dalton stating his upset at the recently signed employment contract for the Mead Public Library Director. That will be referred to the library board. 1934 is a claim from Sandra Wimler for alleged damages to her basement and property due to a clogged city drain. 
that will be referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. 1935 is a communication from Charter Communications stating that there are telephone companies probing the country looking for <coughs> communities who so will grant them franchises and ask that if the city is contacted by one of these companies, they would like the opportunity to highlight key provisions. That will be referred to Finance. 1936 is a communication from the Sheboygan Press stating that as a public service to extend important civic information to citizens in Sheboygan, they will begin to post all of our legal notices to an aggregated state website at no cost to the city. That lies over. 1937 is a communication from Fred and Muriel Krauss thanking Alderperson Meyer for her efforts as their Alderperson. And that will lie over. 1938 is a communication received by the mayor from Herb and Joan Reisinger stating their concerns regarding certain salaries at Mead Library and feeling strongly that the city is entitled to a complete breakdown of how the salaries are justified. That will be referred to the library board. 1939 is a communication received by the mayor from Kim Kester stating she would like the Mead Library to offer the Heritage Quest a genealogy database. That will be referred to the library board. 1940 is a resolution to request that the Library Board of Trustees move to reopen contract negotiations with the director of the library. That lies over. Excuse me. Paul McGraw. With this resolution, Your Honor, to make it run parallel with the other resolution and so forth, would it be um, advisable at this point in time to ask for suspension of the rules and pass this tonight? I don't think. I think the problem is that the, it was not on the agenda, right. uh, it was not provided within, you know, even an emergency document needs two hours okay. before it. So I think you have an issue with the open meeting law. Yeah, you're not our head. <laughs> 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 Oh, my You start the I mean, precedence. Uh, <laughs> <tournament. laughs> yes. Attorney McLean, please continue. 1941 is a communication received by the mayor from Don Rapinski stating her upset regarding the high taxes of Sheboygan and the fact that her road desperately needs resurfacing. That will be referred to Public Works. There's a motion to adjourn. A second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.